in, in the Philippines that we are hearing the draft. Yeah. The draft might have started. Always you know, on the way. I hear Matilda have a chance to break three curses back to back to back. Okay, what's the curse? First curse. Wait, gotta do the night. No host country. No host country has ever won the M series. And also, number two, mere curse. Number three, two time. So now, we live in the world where there's a possibility. There is. That AP bread. AP bread is a curse breaker. They, yes. Mm -hmm. Breaking the curse of the host country. Mm -hmm. And then being the two time world champion. With that being said, we're jumping into the draft where AP Brand have the momentum. They have the first game win. Onyx, this is their moment. This is their chance. If they want to keep in the game, if we want to make sure it's not a 4 0, they got to win this one. Momentum is big, especially when AP Brand gets it. We saw even in the game itself, when they got that snowball rolling, it was almost uh, impossible to yep. derail it. Onyx this time with first Boy. pick. Oh, they instantly pick up the Joy. AP Brand, are they going to be picking up the Valentina, which is the typical answer to the Joy? And then the Fredrin that we saw, uh, they utilize so well for the side of uh, AP Brand. Because the, the thing with Fredrin against Joy is obviously the Joy will be able to get away from the Fredrin, but once you get on top of the Joy, you're going to be A-OK -okay because of the continuous stuns that you get out of the Fredrin. Another option is the Akai that AP Brand also Honor. likes. Let's do a very quick recap here. Tiger Bruno. Let's do okay. a very quick recap here. Onyx has banned out Faramis, Matilda as well as 1-1. One, one. AP Brand has banned out Gunnavir, Nolan as well as the Kaja. Mm -hmm. Onyx first picked the Joy very early on, and AP yep. Brand responds with the Tigreal as well as the Bruno here, mm -hmm. where again, the Tigreal, I would say, is multi-talented. He can do a lot. Yeah. One of them is that he can actually slow down the jungler. Yeah, exactly, because of the push. That you, that you have, and that's uh, going to be a problem for Kyrie for sure. That means that they need uh, they, they need a hero from the room that can actually match where the Tigreal is. So that might be a hero that uh, Boots, or sorry, Keyboy might be looking towards, like a, some, someone to kind of keep tabs on the on the Tigreal. And that's going to be the Claude and Joy together. I mean, I understand that Charizla, but Claude and Joy together, there's so much scaling on the side of Onyx. Don't get me wrong, they're very strong in the latter portions of the game, but uh, might be too greedy. Yeah. Especially considering both of them can technically be countered by the implosion, right? They go in, they can get combo That's together. Right. And in lane already, it's already a tough matchup. Mm -hmm. Bruno versus Claude. I've been in the receiving end of a Bruno matchup again when I'm on a Claude. Yeah, but here's the thing. Not I fun, man. I kind of feel like the Claude is for two reasons. Because I kind of feel like for AP Brand, they do respect CW, so this Claude could be banned out. And I kind of feel like... Seeing the Tigreal, you're kind of looking at a draft that does not have a Minotaur. So perhaps that's also yeah. another reason why CW was like, okay, I can use the Claude here. Yeah. But they got to finish things out because a AP Brand just now feel oh. was a very big impact. And the Paquito, before it gets banned out, yeah. instantly picked up. Yep, the Paquito obviously great against uh, Claude when it comes to like uh, the sub moments of the game. Um, what I don't like about the, the Claude is that there's that passive that we know for sure for Tigreal. Tigreal actually likes. Yeah going up against the Claude. It's like a Minotaur, right? Almost like a Minotaur with a second skill, but this time it's a passive. So I'm interested why Onik went for this kind of play. Obviously, the Claude is great versus the Bruno, though, in the latter portions of the game. But in the early stages, it's not going to be an answer. So I will not be surprised if Baby Brent just bans out the Angela, because it's, uh, it's a, I mean, he has a, a lot of vehicles here for Onik. Yeah, looking at the draft right now, looks like Baby Brent are putting respect on to Sans because he is a playmaker for for Onik. Onik manning out the Boxia, making sure that perhaps they're really looking at a jungler that is not super tanky. And we saw how the Frederick was very impactful in the game. Will that be one of the bans? I believe for Kyle TZ as well, he's been able to flex, utilize the flex pick of the Paquito, right? Yeah, that's I right. believe it was group stages or somewhere in the knockout stages where Kyle was able to utilize this. Yeah. But either way, they always go for the FDP. FDP? Full damage Paquito. That's right. They want to go for um, all out all damage Paquito, which is going to be great versus the, this Claude. And then eventually the Joy, if they do lock it down. I'm curious. if I think AP Brin might just get the few hero on their fourth pick. Yeah. And what else is there? I mean... They mark, <laughs> there, there are players the who yeah. actually like the cushion going up against the Joy. Looking Ooh. at the Lily as well as Kadida Ben is 
very clever because, like you said, Wolf, a lot of scaling coming in from Onyx, they need a very strong mid laner to actually help them out in the early as well as the mid to make sure that they don't receive a lot of problems going into the game. But what is the safer pick here? Valentina picked up. Yep, very I'm, I'm, safe. I'm looking and I'm thinking, I don't know, a, a court maybe even? Because wave clear as well? Yeah, or for, Onyx? For Onyx, for sure. The f with the Faramis being banned, it's not available. You, you go either Eve or... Uh, Novaria? Even Eve Novaria. Novaria. Novaria is a bit safer though, yeah, right? Compared safer, to the yeah. rest, because you are going to be able to have that range yeah. advantage against whoever you're up against. Or maybe they go Angela plus uh, perhaps a Cho, a defensive hero. Like Angela plus Ruby actually for, uh, for Onyx. Or Rafaela, Angela. I mean, they double down in the support because I think that for both the Joy as well as this uh, this squad, you're you have so much scaling, so you you're so dependent on scaling and uh, getting items that you need some supporting from your roamer. <laughs> oh, so yeah. Your Gord, Gord, picked up as well as yeah, the Ruby, Ruby here. Oh. Okay, the two analysts got it right. Yeah. I'm, I, I feel clever calling out the Gord. <laughs> you guys are clever, right? The Gord and the Ruby here. Mm. The Ruby. It's going to be quite good at actually stopping any of these initiations, especially the dashes coming Ooh. in from Nokito. But AP Bren... What if they go Phobius for AP Bren? Oh, that's going to be pretty good. Joy and Ruby, Claude. Yeah. And then just flexing the Paquito in the jungle? Mm -hmm. I mean, if that's the case, even the play-by-play -play can call it. Yeah. <laughs> they can even heck... I mean... I mean... You, I mean... You can be proud of yourself. It's fine, man. Yeah, it's for fine. sure. People but love you. I don't like the Phobius, though. Like, All right. I mean, it's, I, I get it, right? I mean, it's a lot of damage. You can actually jump in and distract a lot of the backline members. It's yeah. good for Snowball, yeah. but maybe they want something a bit more reliable. Yep. And that's the Martis, Martis in the jungle. All right, so the Paquito is going to be going to the XP lane. They know there's a lot of CC on Onyx. They go with anti-CC. Yeah, looking at Onyx draft here, I kind of feel like they have to be very calculative with their aggression because going up against a Martis, if you force out the turtle and you take way too much damage, mm -hmm. you're going to put the Martis on the pedestal. The Martis will be a very happy boy. Yep. Happy man. Happy, Happy man. man. Obviously for Joy as well as the Claude, the late game is the power spike. And they're going to be really, really strong. If we're going to be looking at the heroes, that's evident on the side of AP Bren. They, they don't have the best defense against the Joy as well as the Claude, so that's going to be a problem. But in the early stages, that is where this Bruno Martis lineup snowball coming out from the side of AP Bren might be uh, what we can expect. As we go into game number two in the grand final of the M5 World Championship, can Onyx delay the game, scale it up, or will AP Brand bringing the pressure and stop them in their tracks? We'll witness in this game number two of this best of seven. Starting us off already with the crowd roaring again. Resolve Memorial Coliseum. Anything interesting to note down here as we get into the game, Wolf? Well, I'm surprised that there's no Tigreal invasion yet at level one. I don't think that they'll ever be uh, considering it because Keyboy is skipping taps on Ogwen. This is what we said, right? There has to be a hero for Keyboy that kind of mirrors where Ogwen wants to go for. And going in for the quantum charge yeah. of Ogwen, interesting. He wants to. Yeah, he wants to be part of these skirmishes, and uh, yeah, Carry still has the retribution, so it's gonna be safe. He uses it. Red free over Ogwen with a shove back onto Kyrie, but he's still gonna be able to these shots some damage. Keyboy is coming in as well. Ogwen with a flicker backwards defensively. That's a flicker as well. Told about Rook kick. Keyboy picks up first blood in game number two. A change of pace for Onik. A good start, but again, we gotta see how this impact really happens. What's the advantage of Onik now having the first blood? Oh, that's a lot of advantage because now Kyrie gets to level 4 without any problem. They can contest the turtle because the ultimate coming out from Kyrie will be up soon anyways. And the fact that Keyboy had an extra EXP from that kill, that's gonna be, eh, that's gonna be great. Electrifying beats already used up Keyboy as well with his own run Wolf King, but it's a mortal coil and it's a complete opposite approach, right? Master Assassin for Mr. Reketiano, Super Marco, and for CW, it's that tenacity. Yeah, we, we've seen that AB brand, they really want to win out the lane, but I've been looking at game number one as well as game number two. AB brand has been putting a lot of pressure inside the jungle of Onik, yeah. but why are they putting in the pressure there? It's mainly because of the joy. They don't want to, they don't want Kyrie to snowball. Yeah. Kyle TZ, it, um, Kyle TZ, I mean, despite being pressured. We'll get to level 5 first, but I don't think that they will have time for this. Good poke coming up from Sun. Great oh, poke and boots as well. 
forcing out a mortal coil. Kaltizi is sewn completely away, but Flaptizi doing the same thing to Sans. Forcing a flicker out. Harry jumping in, finding the retribution on a turtle as T-Boy dishes out some damage with boots. Just trying to keep AP Brent, their front line at bay. And Onik have secured a neutral objective without giving anything away. Onik is starting off very, very good. A bit of Flaptizi was able to zone Sans away. But looking at how Kyrie is playing the game and the engage coming in from boots, it's very, very impressive. So now, Onik, even though it's a 300 goal lead, is actually quite impactful here. What do yeah. you think, Wolf? Yeah, definitely impactful. We were talking about, about the laning, I mean, the scaling of Kyrie as well as the CW. The fact that they're not getting run over by the Tigreal, by the Paquito, oh. as well as the Martis, that's great. And Sans, for some reason, again, Key Boy. Oh my. He found the I'm offended off camera. Few was caught off guard. And Sans just missed it gushed. Oh, look at the bottom lane here. So Marco having to go back. How easy is there? CW, I don't think he can do anything here. Not much. Not right now. Pops in at go on because he <laughs> farms back. But Wolf, they're being kept at bay. The smartest gets yep. outscaled by quite a bit. Not for sure. Not a good sign. But they can still recover. They still have, uh, what, five minutes to go with this? If they find the opening finally with Kyle Tizi, they can uh, just run over and then Flap Tizi eventually controls the map. That is definitely what AP Brand is looking for. Yeah, right now we're looking at two minutes to three minutes. We see how CW is double farming both the goal lane as yes. well as the mid lane. And we got to talk about this. Gord not receiving the, the farm. Is it still fine for him, Wolf? Yes, in a way that all he needs to do is to actually equalize the lanes. At this point, Sans, he just needs to prolong the game. That's what he needs to do. He feels very adaptive, right? The way that they are actually giving CW these waves. They yeah. know that Sans just picked up a kill, so that he can afford to actually give a wave in the mid lane. That's when CW decided to rotate over. Yeah, this is one of the benefits of having a mid laner that is not farm dependent. But let's look at the items here. Yep, there's the Hunter Strike that uh, Lab TC has picked up. The FDP. 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 The full damage Paquito. And it's going to be oh, look at uh, utilized up top. A lot of damage onto Boots. An implosion committed as well. Boots now caught in. I'm offended. He pops in the penalties on. Flickers out to safety. No but should fall. The decimate finds the kill. And Kyle Teasy will give AP Bren their first kill on the board for game number two. But looking at Onik here, they're really trying to trade things off because they're like, okay, if you get one kill, we need to get two. I kind of feel like that's the idea. And the two that they got was the buff, as well as CW getting a little bit of farm coming yeah. in from that mid lane turn. He's, he's gaining gold fast. And the thing is, Onik lost their flicker onto Keyboy. It's going to be a massive uh, battle spell to not have for two minutes. Knowing full well that the five to seven minutes, that is actually the power spike of AP Bren. Onik, despite them leading, when it comes to the goal, they should not be that comfortable. And burning boots as well as Keyboy's flicker, just like that for the trade-off, might not be the best choice. Not the best choice, but I think that's the only choice that they could have made. AP Brenner doing so well at going for neutral objectives, but also screening the map. They know if Onik want to look for a trade, and they get the more valuable one by calculation. Oh, flicker implosion, bringing him back. Now the shove in, but a Mystic Gush. There's a lot of damage to the back as well. Keeping going to be knocked out by the Worldy. I'm offended, not connecting the Decima does though. TPZ by Boots. Defensive penalty zone to the back. GW finding a trade in the bottom lane. And he will be able to get just the turret here as Ogwen screens him and pushes him back again. I mean, we saw in the interview, CW can get money, man. He can get the gold. And I kind of feel like Onik right now, they are fine with giving something up as long as they get something back, as long as it's not a, a losing trade. Proactiveness coming in from AB Brand, yep. but we got to look at Kyrie as well. He just finished his Starlium side. It's just one item, but once he gets two, once he gets three, yep. it's going to be trouble. And speaking of trouble, AP Brand already invaded the purple buff that should be belonging to Kyrie. Then they secured their own. They even got a turret up top. And obviously the power spectrum we're talking about for AP Brand, we can now feel it. And Onik will really scratch their heads with yep. the flicker being burned out by both Keyboy as well as Boots. I want, to mention, ago. I want to mention as well, even though Sans, he was giving away the lane, he has a goal advantage over few. Yeah. I guess because of the kills that he was able to get, as well as the assist. But Onik, they don't need to panic. All they need to do now is to defend their lanes. Make sure that the middle is going to be intact. Keyboy and Sans might throw their bodies just to defend that. And then secure the, the farm onto CW. And again, looking at the wow. goal earned here, CW is number one, so Marco is number two. But looking at Onik here, the way that they've been moving around the map, it's like that they're not sacrificing too much for helping out CW. Yeah, now they've actually lane swap, decided to do that. AP Brand feels very happy to do that. Flap Teasy 1v1 against CW. Play Battle Mirror Image is going to be used up. Flap Teasy. Knockout strike, one more shot. Blazing to from CW. 
No battle spells used up just yet. AB Brand in the bottom lane. That's a penalty zone. Connecting on the open, but he gets a massive shove on the three. Kyrie walks out with the electrifying beat. Super Michael, did she got damage on the boots? I don't bet it. Into a testament. Oh. Kyrie with retribution. He misses it. But Kyle doesn't. He finds another. D-Boy falling. Sounds of the mid lane. Pressured down on his own tier one. Kyrie looking to clear out the waves. That's a dive angle from AP Brand. A testament and Kyrie. We'll still be able to walk away. Super Marco gets a big goal on top. CW 1v1 against Flap DZ. Battle Mirror Aim is going to be used out. Knockout Strike 1 2. CW takes the 1v1. Hey, why did you bring a gun to a fist fight, man? CW was playing unfair, but we got to look at the items here. Yep. Onik, what's happening here, Wolf? Well, it's a massive snowball. The Radiant Armor picked up. It's the first time for Kyle DZ. That paid dividends, and now it's going to be. Tanking through Onyx damage. Mortal Coil, but a penalty zone will be used in time. Kyle Teasy going for the bay! He turns it around. The shutdown goes to the Roamer. I would say that's still a win for AP Bren. Onyx right now making mistakes. We saw the mistake just now. Kyrie unable to secure the turtle. Good thing by AP Bren, they actually reset it so that the retribution was not enough. Yeah. Now, what does Onyx have to do? Well, Onyx just have to defend once again. Very unfortunate that CW was the one get, that got picked off. That was great play coming out from Kautizi with the blade armor as well because Onik was trying to run him down but he lasted for such a long time that AP Brand was able to trade it off. With the Radiant armor as well as blade armor picked up by this Kautizi Martis. Now you know that they have the snowball. Definitely needs to secure the, fir the second, uh, I mean the first Lord for AP Brand for sure. The question is, well, we see AP Brand right now with a thousand gold lead. They're moving as a unit, they're moving as three, they're moving as four. What are they planning, Wolf? Are they just wanting to get kills or they just want to zone Onik away? Yeah, this is just about zone, uh, zoning Onik away. They do have a lot of potential when killing. But at the same time, if they just secure the Lord and then just take the turns, they're going to be fine because what happens afterwards was will be to, for them to take out the jungle of Onik. Well, right now, looking at the goal, looking at the positioning, it is definitely AP Brand favorite, and Flap TZ is doing the most amount of damage in this game. Looks like he's fine being alone. AP Brand doing this 4-1 positioning is good for AP Brand. It's massive for them. Kyrie looking for an angle, gets shoved back by Open, electrifying beast. Whoa! Oh! Kyrie has just stolen it away. Kyle had the retry. He had the level advantage as well. The magical man. My goodness. Only one time, man. It's Kyrie deep. was like, don't worry. It was just luck. It was just a mistake. Holy. I'm not going to lose the next one. I got this, says Kyrie. Brings me back to the time where I was able to work with this man. Wow. Wow. Just wow. Wow. What you know, a steal. What a steal. That's what we're wowing about. Every time he's, he's doing that, back in his uh, younger days, you know, he would scream, uh, which means you cannot out me. Ooh. Ooh. You cannot win a duel Ooh. against Retri. I mean, that's the mentality you need to be a world champion. Because right what? now, again, this is... We got to talk about the situation here. Even though, yes, Kyrie was able to secure that Lord. Yep. But we cannot deny it is still in control of AB Brand. Yep, they sure. are the one in the driver's seat. I guess the best part here for the side of Onik is that nobody died during that exchange, right? They were able to snatch the Lord. Nobody died. So that means that they can at least equalize the lanes. Every minute that they buy for CW to farm, for Kyrie to farm, that's going to be great. Great news for Onik. So now AB Brand again. Looking at the tempo that they're moving, I personally for me, even though Kyrie can scale up very well, CW on the claw can scale up very well. Yeah. Late game Onik is gonna be very dangerous. That's right. AP Brand, do they have to force things or they're fine taking it at the tempo that they're taking it right now? Hmm. I guess with the hero that they have, they cannot. Like if they had them, something like an Arlet, perhaps yeah. they can force things. They have that Tiger as well as the Paquito, which is a you know committal kind of a lineup, as well as the Martis. You, you cannot just, you know, get a kill and then get out. When, surely you can because you're fast, but it's not that kind of hero. But then it gets too risky, does it not, yeah. right? I mean, if you do uh, not force anything, don't look for a snowball, then it's completely reliant on the Bruno. You have a lot of cover, I get it, right? You already yeah. have a Paquito, the Tigreal, the Valentina as well. Three amazing cover heroes, but Onik, they went for the other side. You have cover, we have dive. They have a Joy, a Claude, a Terizla, and a ruby. Everyone wants to, to dive. 
and the Gord, he's playing the the best defense is offense. Yeah. The best cover is if my team dives in and I deal free damage. Yeah, because looking at this game, it reminds me of a diggy, an alarm time bomb. Because right now, AP brand, hoot hoot. Hoot hoot. MC facts, Sky wow. King. Wow. Well, this, I guess wow. the saying is true. This is yes. not a Lord confirmed. It's a Lord steal. 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 Eight, eight times. Eight times. In M5. And this is the season, or this is the M series where a lot of people are saying, you know, Kyrie's retry is not as good. It's so so. It's so so. This is so so, is apparently. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> eight steals is so so. Oh my goodness. Okay, maybe, maybe when we hit double digits. Maybe that's the threshold the people are looking oh for. Maybe goodness. they. You're the Sky King, aren't you? Yeah. Maybe they didn't finish their sentence. So so good, right? Okay. Yeah. Here's the thing. You want to know my reasoning of why it's only eight times? Why? Because they've been dominating the map so much. You're right. They Wait. don't have the opportunity to steal. They just You're claim right. it for themselves. And, and still eight times. So only a few teams give Kyrie the opportunity to even steal it because they started it. And, and to think that. They're dominating so much that they actually don't lose so much games. Actually, their only loss might be against uh, Blacklist, right? And one yes, against... Yes, uh, yes, 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 yes. In the knockout stage. The knockout stage. Wait, in the entire tournament. The only they, game that they, they lost. They, another, they had another 3-1, I believe. No, Remember was, the 1-1 one, one from uh, See You Soon? When they were turned around? Hey, look, I man. believe it was 2-0, bro. I got, I got ADHD. I can't, I, can't, I can't remember anything much, but... Right now, we're looking at the players again. Thank you very much to all the audience here in the venue as well as watching at home. We are going to provide the best, I would say, services for the players to make sure that they are having a oh, good yeah, time they... in game. But That's either way, right. right now, again, AP Brand, back to the topic. Yep. No losses from, from uh, Onik. Yeah, They've I only mean, dropped to the two Black. PH teams. One, yep. Two games against Blacklist, one game so far in AP Brand. Yep. The Atas Langit at Onik. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's how you beat the Sky Kings. What does that mean? be untouchable. What does that mean? There's the sky. And then above that, there's Onik. Yeah, that's basically the... Yeah, yeah that's like at Onik. Above the skies, there's where Onik lay. Flashback to MSC 2021, that's the gist of it. LaFell, you just gave us the gist of it. You know what? The first time I met you, that was the first thing you said to me. Yes. <laughs> the gist of it. And now you know why. That's, that's why we're working together now. That's where our friendship began. We got that With connection. With the gist of it? Yeah, the gist of it. Our connection is special, guys. Yes, we are special indeed. In fact, this whole desk is special. Yeah, with a special connection as well. That's right. That's the title of the podcast. Oh, oh my God. God. He oh. had to go there. <laughs> okay. He had to go there. Check Learn out soft selling to hard selling. <laughs> Check out YouTube, find Wolf, and you'll be happy. Now, Wolf, that's right. I want to be happy too. Me too. AB Brain right now, <laughs> is there a good chance that they can end this game in the next 10 minutes? It, there is in my head. Chance. That's that's the, the the timeline. There is a great chance, especially if they keep their. I think they have the. They still have their battle spells, so that means that even in this uh, Lord push, they're gonna be able to defend and then try to make baby take tur turtles, and they have the Bruno reaching the critical mass. All right. So yeah, to answer your question, yes, they do. Oh, here it is. Top player KDA in M5. Wow. Wow. He went hoots there. So 14.92 for Sans. TLB. 14.08 for CW. Even though TLB didn't make it, but Hoon has been spectacular with KDA. Kyrie's not here, but Hoon is. Hoon is here. Kyrie. So does that is mean he. Hoon is better? He is he. Hey, numbers don't lie. <laughs> numbers, numbers don't lie. So Sagan is top five players in M5. Let me just say, Onik might be looking at Hoon. Onik may be looking at Hoon. Who knows, man? Hoon is showing up. No. Nope. Okay, fine. Maybe not Onik. Maybe BTR. I don't maybe know. Maybe that's a reach, but... Yeah, now the question is, right, like, is it stat padding or is it legit? It's legit, man. Okay. I think if M5 or any M series uh, is a difficult tournament to kind of stat pad, bro. Double digits KDA, man. Yeah. Almost 14.92. Shoutouts to Mobazane. He must be loving this asset right now while he's restreaming. Yep. Dude, you know what? Shout out to Mobile Zen. Shout out to all the restreamers out there. Mm -hmm. Maybe you guys don't hear this enough, but we love you. Yeah. You're the real MVP. No, I think we are. <laughs> anyways. <laughs> anyways, anyways. Again, looking looking into this into this game, Onik has a chance because talk us through this, uh, Mirko, the scaling of the uh, joy as well as yep. the uh, quad. Oh, but and with that, no. we are going into the game. But you can still talk about it. All right, so the scaling, right? I mean, for the Claude, it's going to be amazing towards the later stage of the game. You deal so much DPS. Whoa! 
Just as oh I say God. it, the mere curse is real, man. I say his name and he dies. I flap Teasy gets knocked out. To the family wow. of CW, I'm sorry I mentioned it. We're sorry. We're sorry. We're yeah. special. And with uh, Flap TZ not even having to commit the, the flicker. That's okay. gonna be a. I don't know what happened, but that's gonna be great for AP Bread. They must be, must be feeling great right now. And now, what they can do is to control the long lane once again with Flap TZ, then just uh, continuously siege against AP Bread. Right now, Ogwen is looking for a target. Sans able to stun him up. Looking at the position here, Ogwen is going to figure out where the majority members of Onik is. Having Kyle Tizi as well as few there, they are in position to follow up whenever necessary. But the more important one is, look at Flap Tizi. He's hiding. He is. He's doing a good job at it too right now. And Kyle Tizi is just going on to the purple buff. Trying to steal the way a good steal back, or I would say recovery from Onik there. It was a stun Mystic Projectile into Kyrie's Retry. That's right. Looking at the goal here, even though CW has died twice, so Marco hasn't died at all. Yep. Only a 300 goal difference. That's impressive. The two Very waves, impressive. I believe, yeah? Yeah. Yep. The double lane setup that was uh, given to CW. And the fact that they're defending mid, this is the most important resource now for Onik. Getting the mid lane intact means that you will have access to all to your jungle so, so much easier. And that means also that you can position yourself around the Lord later on. <laughs> yeah, losing the side lanes is like uh, losing a sock. A and then sock. losing the mid lane is like losing a shoe. You can still wear a shoe without a sock, but you cannot wear a, a, a shoe with a, a sock without a shoe. Wait, what? I think you can. <laughs> but yeah, we get it. Okay, we get it, right? The mid lane it. is more important. Uh, listening from the crowd, I guess we can. Yeah, I we understand. can. We can. All right, 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 right. Thank you, crowd. Thank you. Sometimes you got to get them to correct us, right? Yep. Yeah, we, you know, um, I'm, I'm running out of, out yep. of ideas. What, I, what can I say? It's special. I think, uh, I think Merkel wears his expensive shoes without uh, socks. Hey. Don't get to that, right? Kyrie now trying to steal it. Oh, he doesn't get it. Cal Teasy takes it away, snatches it away from Kyrie's hands. Hey, by the way, Super Marco went for the RG Rose Gold meter. It's gonna be perfect versus the aggression that can come from Kyrie. And now the Lord Dance has begun. We gotta talk about AB Brand 1.3k gold lead. Onik here, they are at a disadvantage. Science keeps trying to figure Ooh. out where the members of AP Brand are, and he's been finding them. Looking at the HP as well, AP Brand, they are chunked down just a little bit because Kyle Teasy has been absorbing the damage yep. coming in from the Lord. Keyboy, can he find a good opening here? Kyle might have to reset this. CW's walking up right now. Kyle Teasy finds a good pinch down, but CW takes in a half HP. Boots doing the same thing. Mortal Coil used up defensively. Kyrie takes control of the Lord. They're not going to look to reset it. I'm offended. It's an abyssic gush. It's an amazing duet as Boots distracts the back line. Few very, very low. Not going to be chased out. Kyrie finds a double kill right now. Scout is going to be forced to use the Mortal Coil defensively. Flap Teasy went for the hills. The Mystic Projectile Ooh. connects at wow. max range. And Kyle Teasy falls. Now it's Flap Teasy was looking for an angle to maybe turn this around. But Onik, they've taken three members down from AP Brenner looking for the Lord. Run bias. Whoa, what happened there? How did uh. Onik? immediately take control. It was the Lord Dance and the bait and switch that you saw coming out from CW went in forward so that he will first summon rotations from AP Brand. In fact, two people followed him afterwards and that's how they were able to get it. By the way, the underrated factor of the Gord. Oh. Ouch. Ooh. Ouch. Ow, oh, man. Oh. Yep. The underrated factor for the Gord is that he can clear the left push mid with just two spells and you can uh, scout out where your opponents are. Yep. Shove. Ogwen has no dash now. CW battle mirror image to the front. Ogwen forced to flick around. Flap, flap, Teasy. One shot with a nature. Flap, Teasy gets out just barely, but CW does the same thing. Oh man, seven to seven, game number two. Dude, Onik has been waiting. Mm -hmm. They waited for CW. They waited for Kyrie. Look at the items now. Yep. This is the power spike they were looking for. So the three items now onto Keyboy. That means that he is not easily taken out. You can see. That CW eventually gets to the wind of nature and the Malefic War. Dude, right now, listen defense. to the crowd. It's all for AP Brand. They're still looking at AP Brand to defend this, but Onik, with just one more dance. It was 1,000 gold lead for AP Brand. Mr. Now Gush. it's 2.7 with them. Implosion only onto Keyboy. That's the Roma for the team. Kairu with Electrifying Beats. Keyboy finds it. Offended on the Super Mario penalty zone. Dodge away from and the knockout strike brings Boots back to the turret for AP Brand to do what the crowd's been chanting. Defend! Right now, Onik. They are trying their best to get the resources coming in from AP Brand. They wanted the structures. But AP Brand, how did they 
How did they do that? How did they defend so well? That was so oh, quick. Oh, right onto Kaltese, blazing duet! Flat. When Agent Liu's not missed it, Gush as well! What yes. a bait! Sans flickers out of the shove. Ogwen stunned up. Kyrie walking up against three members. Looking for the dashes. Wow. One more should be able to do it right now. Stop teasing. to be taken low. But Kyrie, Kyrie decides to stop. Sans. Sans. That was crazy. That's Look crazy, Sans. You can see the damage output now from Gamela, from Kyrie, as well as Sans is now. It, they really do hurt now. And the thing with Gord is that even when it's a defensive kind of hero and it's strong at when, it, when he's able to land his spells, it still is a pretty good scaling hero as well. The Impure Age versus the spells that he has and the items that he picked up. Sans will be a threat in the latter portions of the game as well. Looking at the damage dealt here, Flap TZ was number one, but Sans was able to overcome him. And again, he has been absorbing less minions Less mm -hmm. minion gold just because he's sharing it with CW and now yep. Onik, I would wow. say this is this is their win condition, no? Definitely. We're reaching the point where they're stronger. I'm offended. Flicker already. Oh, you no. keep burning this away from Ogwen and now what do they use to catch? They exactly. practically can. Kyrie dashes forward, forces that mortal coil, even pops in that electrifying beats. Oh, that's a problem for AP Brand, that flicker was the sole reason why they were able to defend the bottom lane and get two kills afterwards. And now that the Lord is going to be available for both teams, I mean, if you're looking at the Flap TZ, he's making the lane pushed against Onik, but not having the Flicker Implosion, that's going to hurt. Yeah, right now, the Lord Dance is started by AP Brand again. We got to remind ourselves that Onik was able to win it out with CW using himself as bait and then giving the opportunity for Onik to bite back to go in, to get an engage, and dish out the damage. And now it's Onik. We're holding it in, despite Joy being seen in the top side of the map. They still want to go for the Lord Dance right now on CW's damage. He's definitely scaled. Conceal play. Keyboy finding with the position of Super Marco. Kaltizi forcing his way in. Ogwen looking for the back right now, but Kaltizi, his Immortality is going to be popping down. That's a retribution from Kyrie. Super Marco free hitting in the back. Boost going to be taken very low, and that's going to be a lot of damage plays out by Kai. Jumps to the back with the electrifying beats. Super Marco, one last shot. Should do it, but he's unable to find it. Only an immortality. Burnt down for AP. Brent, they're looking for more into the mid lane. A good stun to take Flap TZ lower, but he still has the immortality. Mystic Gush trying to predict the maneuvers from Flap. But for Onik and AP Brent, who wins it? Definitely Onik getting that Lord. But good thing for AP Brent is that they only lost their immortality in exchange for the turn in the middle. So they're still trying to get some kind of trade. And AP Brent. Unfortunately, with just Kalteezy manning the front lines, it's not enough. You see the damage output from Onik. It's always a threat. Everybody's a threat now from Onik. Yeah, but Keyboy taking quite a lot of damage. And speaking of threats, man, I'm looking at Super Marco. The damage that he dished out was a lot. Yes. Onik, they have to respect it. I gotta say, either CW or Kyrie, they gotta find a way to get it to get to Super no! Marco and take him down. A mistake and a costly one. AP Bren with Kalteezy. He's looking for more. The Mystic Projectile stops Kyle. But that's a big, big kill in the 19th minute of the game. And Onik, whatever, whatever playstyle they're doing with CW, it worked in some of the moments, but in that crucial one, it didn't. What I'm trying to say is, CW in the first Lord fight, he went for the min-max play where he's trying to bait out AP Bren and become very aggressive when it comes to his positioning. It paid well during the first Lord, but not in the second one. All right, Electrifying Beast, Immortality. Now Winter Truncheon bot, Flap TZ, buying a lot of time. Ogun running in with a Conceal. Implosion Flicker onto Kyrie, but he buys oh. the Immortality. Now Fuel with the damage as well, Boots. Still terrified down, I'm offended by Fuel. Kyrie walks away, Keyboy does the same thing. Super Marco, sliding tackle. On to the front, Keyboy brought back to the team. Immortality still ready, he buys it in time. Kyrie looking for the flags. Kyrie looking for the electrifying beast damage, but he won't be able to find it. AP Bren maneuver out of a team fight that they have won. This is the best players in the world. You one mistake, and it feels like 10. Onik, after CW made a crucial mistake, AP Bren controlled the map. AP Bren won that fight. Wow. And they have equalized when it comes to the economy. And even after Flap TZ had to utilize the winner, Truncheon, it was just a, a ploy for AP Bren. The rest of the members get back. It looked really dicey, though. Ogwen might have been like far too early. They see few not in range. But eventually, Cal TZ was there. Uh, AP Bren squad were able to get to find something, even in this stage where Onik has a lot of strength with their, with their items, with their natural scaling. Yeah, looking at how AP Brand has been positioning as well, 
you need eyes in the back of your head, man, because the flank coming in from Cal TZ and Flap TZ as well, it's like whenever oh. you're focusing, something else is going on. That's a lot of damage, but Flap should be able to sustain back up. He pumps the regen, and he goes onto the waves. Does he have a bloodlust? He, he doesn't. Uh, yeah, I don't think so, no. I don't think so. I think it's all from the Festival of Blood. And the uh, RGM. Yeah, RGM, for sure. So now, looking at CW, we have... Okay, right now we got to talk about this. CW Win. is the aggressor. He's the bait. But here's the thing, man. Wait, oh, no. do they not know? Okay, Kyle TZ sees it. They see it. Flap TZ sees it too, but he might be too late right now. They're going to go on to Kyle TZ. Burst him down. Kyle will lose his life. A shutdown for Boots. Keyboy zoning down. The members! Boots! A penalty zone on the Super Marco. Holding him back. Now Flap joining the team teamfight. But a win! Oh. An implosion to the back. CW finally plays a new weapon. Flap TZ goes in for the punches. A lot of damage plays down. Super Marco free hitting for the back. That's a lot of damage down. Why? Why is that I'm affected? Super Marco losing the mortality. Keyboy will not lose his life. AP Bren. They're still able to sustain backup. Super Marco, no flicker though. Kyrie looking for the assassination, looking for a play. Super Marco steals some life back with that house claws and is able to defend. Don't offend Keyboy! Oh my goodness. Keyboy goes in and he's gonna bring all you in! A big shot, but an even bigger shot from Kyrie. CW picks the base turret in the mid lane down. Now Ogwen, one member left standing. Kyle TZ gonna be back in four seconds. Ogwen melted down by CW. Evolve Lord still crashing in the bottom lane. Onyx taking their time. Kyle TZ holding it down, going for the wave. What? Lord went back and forth. Mystic yep. projectile onto Ogwen, dodge away from Mystic. Gosh, I'm offended. Kyle TZ melted down again. And now it's going to be two members in desperation going in. One second on the Flap TZ. Who expected a full reverse sweep? It will never have happened in the M5 Grand Finals. We're back to equal on the board. Ladies and gentlemen, we have your attention here. There is no such thing as a clean sweep in the M5 World Championship. We're starting this series with a one to one And we ended that game with a wonderful display of duel of mechanics from both of the teams with Keyboy and Ogwen making their own plays. But in the end, it Oh was. my goodness! We've done it. We We've hit done it. 3, 3 million. Point four million. That wow. deserves a clap, everyone. Thank you very much to all the audience here, as well as you guys watching at home. And let me just say, this deserves it. This is the beginning of an amazing grand finals. I'm sure. A lot went on. Back and forth. Pendulum swings. We need the help of the panelists. Leo and Gideon, you got to help us out here. We'll do more than help you out. We'll actually break down this game again. Onyx showing exactly why they are a force to be reckoned with on the road to claiming the golden road. Going past 20 minutes, taking the availability into their own hands. What a game. Truly a beautiful game here from both of these teams. We saw some really good moments, but more importantly, the adaptations in the draft as well has been spot on. We're really seeing these teams target each other in the most painful areas, finding those pressure points to make the difference, to find those advantages in the game. In addition to the draft, again, forcing AP Bren to respond a certain way, play a certain way, come execution, Onyx is second to none. The way that Keyboy and Sans would set up an almost just two-man kill squad that would force out uh, resources from AP Bren, flickers, ults being spent out, it just compromises what Apey Brand wants, especially in the late game. Absolutely, right? But before we even get to the late game, turtle fights were already a bit of a struggle. We did see that Onik was struggling in the first couple of minutes, and all of this coming down to the flexibility of Super Marco and as well as Flap TZ. Full damage per Keto as well, swapping the two and making sure that once he has that full item and having an early game marksman, gives them the flexibility of deciding who gets to participate in these upcoming turtle fights. Not Lord fights, turtle fights. Because if Mr. CW knows anything, once Flap TZ had two items, he was definitely in the danger zone. And that's why throughout the early to mid, it was clear that AP Bren was still playing with fire. They had dynamite in their hands. And by dynamite, I meant a Filipino cannon. But 
that flap TZ Gambit can only do so much because as you'll see throughout the highlights, he was positioned in a way that if only Onik were to bite down onto the bait, if only Onik were to be fooled by what he was trying to do, then it would work out. That aside, he was just a flanking XP laner. We're going to award our MVP for game number one, putting one on the board for Onik. It's game number two. We're giving it over to Gilak Sans. Oh my goodness, this guy is still crazy as ever in his name. He's playing a difficult position. Mid lane, yes. Did he get his comfort pick? Well, you would make an argument for it, but Gord, especially once you're up against a Tigreal, especially when you're up against a Paquito, your positioning must be crisp, smooth, and most importantly, clean. Looking at his item build, something might be sticking out to you folks. That is indeed a Guardian Helmet. Something tells me this was but a result of a juggle. This is an item that was built in the heat of battle, wherein this battle mage, this Gord, which has, I don't know, if you'll read it the same way as I did, respectfully replaced Eve and Farsa. He's weaving out of combat. When you go into the late game, you're taking damage the way that Super Marco's throwing out them balls. You're gonna wanna space out and then come back. Yeah, and I think, you know, the, the, the combination of Keyboy and as well as Sans is what's most important here, right? Keyboy is going to try and slow down and peel people away from Sans' position because Sans is the safe haven. He is the person that they can fall back to when all hell breaks loose because once they get hit by a single projecta, a single CC, Whew, that gush makes all the difference. You'll see your health bar go from 100 to zero in no time. And it's because of what Sans is putting on the board that's actually making AP Bren's movements all the more awkward. You see Kyle Tz here building full tank Mardis. Even he can't stand in front of the gush, so he has to be choosy. He has to choose and pick which angle to come from. See, look at this, pow! Mm. Flap Tz coming in like he had to dodge. So again, those little micro adjustments compromise AP Bren's approach. I mean, we eventually have to come to that one big fight at the end, right? What everybody was hoping that it was going well, right? You're hoping that Keyboy is going to get punished in these small moments. You're hoping that Kyrie gets into that back line, but it really boiled down to one fight, especially once things got super even. The three man I'm offended that saved it all. Even prior to that, the blockage of the champion stance jabs from Flapteezy, literally making all the difference. And it seems like now we're looking at a new roaming matchup. In the making, a rivalry between a roamer that displaces the whole team and another roamer that displaces the whole team, the Ruby and the Tigreal. We're gonna see more of these two heroes in the future because there's a few left in this series. We're just but at one and one. Real quick, Gideon, come on over. I wanna talk to you real quick. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know who got the MVP here? The huh? season 11 MVP of MPLID. Dude, I heard that this guy, he moved from jungle back into mid. He was once in a rivalry against Kyrie, and what? since then, season nine, he had a 100% win rate on a fanny. No, that's crazy, that's crazy. That's oh, Gilak. That's Gilak? He's Gilak Sans. But when we look at the overall emblems, we see how some of these small moments make the difference, right? Number one, right down here, guys, the laning has changed. It has evolved to a certain degree. Master Assassin on both side laners. This is what's making the difference. And this is why Mr. CW gets one shot even in the later stages of the game. He was playing the defensive emblem, the tenacity. That's why he was so open about his BMI. It was so generously used to save himself from both Flapteezy and Super Marco, which was fine because it was actually Onyx frontliners that was compromising AP Bren. That's why he was okay to just work on the waves and then come in, deal the initial damage so that Sans and Kyrie can clean up. That's why maybe there's a lot of magic defense items from AP Bryn. Mm -hmm. And even so, right? You gotta think ahead. You gotta start thinking like a scientist. The mad scientist himself ending the game with the Guardian's Helm. Again, you don't expect to see your mage decide to go for this item other than the fact that Mr. Flap himself or arguably if he did get caught by Ogre, which is the worst case scenario possible, he had an opportunity to live. With the extra HP, maybe that's all they needed. It's this that's actually really frustrating for AP Bren. I could imagine there was a solid amount of time when they were in the lead and that it seemed like the Lords belonged to them. But that's why their long lane control relied so much on the flap TZ getting it right because not a single Lord went their way. With that said, you're looking at the post game stats here. A lot of damage coming in from CW. This is spread out between heroes and waves. You have CW also farming his mind out 
803 and Kyle TZ using his iframes, using his build, and just hopping in and out of combat to be AP Brent's sandbag. I mean, that's just the next level after you've been practicing your mind out, right? And we have a look at the damage taken. Kyle, he understands his role, and the same goes for Ogwin. They're the punching bag of this team as much as you would like to believe. But even more so, Good Guy Boots is throwing away his life, and I would make an argument that it's an interesting trade. He's using the penalty zone to start off fights, to slow people down, just so that Kyrie can even the score, and more importantly, be able to prioritize neutral objectives. Check this out. Out. CW was actually third in most damage taken from Onik Indo. And what that means is he almost just barely gets away with his life. And that's because of his smart use of his battle spell and his BMI. Now back to the damage dealt story. Of course, a lot of it was on Super Marco, a lot of it was on Few, but when you're playing with a lineup that actually compromises your spacing, which the Valentina is very reliant on, it's kind of hard to lean on that. It mm -hmm. makes Few play only a certain way when Onik allows for it. And the worst part, once you start playing into these lore dances, information is super important. And unfortunately for Few, his abilities are quite short range if you're comparing it to the extra bounces that you get from the Mystic Projectile at times. And